Our series Behind the Ballot has brought you candidates from all over the country, Senate, House, and governor's races. But today, we're staying here in the district where incumbent one-term mayor Andrea Fenty is in a tough race against D.C. Council Chairman Vincent Gray. It's a very hot race here, and the mayor's primary is next Tuesday. In recent polls, Fenty trails Gray by at least five points with likely voters. CBS News' Christine Delargy caught up with Mayor Fenty at an event earlier today. Take a look. Um, so what is your pitch right now to D.C. residents? What do you tell them that you've done for them as mayor? Well, I don't know if you overheard the conversation. I mean, what we say in essence is that Washington, D.C. is a city that is moving forward extremely fast. Uh, there's some things that have happened over the past four years uh, which are just, uh, have never happened in, a DC, in D.C. or if not, uh, if they have, they haven't been for a long time. Uh, one of them is, is crime. Uh, violent crime is way down the city. We're one of the fastest jurisdictions in reducing crime. In fact, our homicide rate uh, is down to lower than 1966. So we've we've reduced it to like a 45-year uh, low. Uh, we've had population growth in the city uh, over the past year. The population in D.C. grew more than it has uh, since the 1940s. If you drive around D.C., you're seeing neighborhoods coming back to life. Uh, places in Southwest and Columbia Heights, east of the river neighborhoods. Uh, neighborhoods that had previously been neglected, but because of our, our, our administration's focus, uh, a lot of great renewal, a lot of great city services being offered, all of it in the midst of an 80-year recession. And then you know, kind of our signature issue, education. Uh, over the past four years, probably no school system has ever made this amount of academic progress in such a short period of time. Four years ago, it would have been unheard of for Washington, D.C., even to apply, let alone win a national competition among states and cities for the race to the top dollars that we were able to receive. Uh, we believe uh, that uh, that is because of Chancellor Rhee's strong academic uh, reform and because of the leadership you know, I've shown as mayor uh, by having mayoral control and the political support we've given. So come Tuesday and Election Day, win or lose, what happens to Michelle Rhee and the, some of the progress we made on education in D.C.? Well, I think what the chancellor has said um, is that it is impossible to do her job uh, without having a mayor uh, who is 100 percent politically, su uh, politically supportive of, of the reform she's making. What you have seen uh, by other uh, uh, politicians, and uh, my chief opponent is one of them, uh, is a real mixed bag. You know, they support some things, but they second-guess others. They micromanage uh, uh, other things. You have to be willing 100% of the time to say, listen, we selected this person as the educational leader for our city. We are going to back them and the tough decisions uh, that they make. Um, yeah, I've done that for four years. It's one of the reasons that we've got such strong growth and strong progress. Uh, it doesn't look likely that any other people running against me, including my chief opponent, would do the same thing. Yeah, I think that is why she has said it'd be very, very tough to work uh, under an administration besides ours. Now, despite all the things you just listed, in one of the most recent polls I've seen, you're actually trailing your yeah. chief opponent, um, Vincent Gray. Why do you think that is, and how do you turn that around by Tuesday? I think it's twofold. Uh, uh, one, you know, we, in the campaign, as I said, it, we've, you know, uh, uh, there's been a lot of discussion about everything else except, you know, the records, you know, and uh, I think as soon as, you know, we get back to focusing on, you know, what I have been able to do as mayor, what my record of performance is versus my opponent's record as a, uh, as a failed manager in the mid-90s, I think people will see, yeah, let's go with someone who's got a proven track record, especially since uh, he had more responsibility. Uh, yeah, the second thing is we've made a lot of tough decisions. You know, going, uh, you know, at the bureaucracy, at the uh, entrenched way the government operates, as hard as we have for four years, you're going to make some people upset. I mean, when we made the decisions to consolidate 27 schools or to lay off half the central administration, I wasn't naive. I didn't think that oh, we were going to do these things and everybody was going to still you know, support me in the same way uh, that they did when I was reelected. These are tough decisions, uh, and, uh, but they were the right things to do uh, because they have more dramatically improved our school system than ever before. There have been others like that. Uh, when you make those type of tough decisions, you get political pushback, and uh, that's why we, we've had an uphill battle. But I believe when we, when we get to the tape uh, on Election Day, people are going to say, we want a mayor you know, who knows how to get things done, uh, who knows how to make tough decisions. That's what you need in leading a, a, a big multi dimensional organization like the D.C. government. One other question on polls. Sure. You're, some would say that you have a little bit of a disconnect with the um, African-American community, a big demographic in D.C. 
Why do you think that is? Well, one of the things that we've done is, you know, as mayor, yeah, I ran on this campaign, we're going to go a thousand miles an hour. We're going to you know, drive as fast as we can to reform the government. When you do that, uh, when you move that fast, you miss a couple steps of including people, making people feel a part of the government, communicating with people. Um, I think in the African American community, uh, maybe you're feeling even a greater disconnect because of that. You know, going forward, what I have said is that in my second term, we're going to have to do a lot better job communicating, listening to people, making sure they feel a part of the process uh, and feel a part of the government. Even my uh, most critical poll acknowledges that over 65 percent of the people who are polled think that we're doing a really go good job leading the city. Our charge over the next five days is connect that to connect that progress uh, with how people feel connected to it. And we'll be able to do that. Uh, we'll be successful. And just like in all my previous campaigns where we made really strong uh, pledges to get things done, you know, I'm hardwired to deliver and we'll do so. Just one last question. Sure. Um, so if you've asked the White House to endorse a candidate in this race, presumably yourself, right? Um, why did you do that and where does that stand? I mean, why wouldn't any mayor in the country ask you know, uh, a great president for their support? That's just something that you do as part of an effective, aggressive campaign. But we're not naive. The President of the United States has a lot of things on his plate. Uh, he's doing a fantastic job. He doesn't have time to go around supporting mayors.